I guess uh, all of you played with these bouncing balls at the dollar store. Yeah. You, you drop the bosses. And yeah, really the 25 bouncing. cent little container. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun to play with them. Now, have you ever wondered how long the... Okay, no, we didn't answer. But, but let's say you've wondered the following question. You drop a ball and the, drop, the, the ball bounces up exactly half of the previous height. Okay. Uh, in that case, how long would the ball travel eventually? As it, like, does that eventually will stop? So let's, let's think of that question. So is the series going to be like it starts off with one or it's just like decreasing half of it? Yeah, 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 right. So let's write, let me write the question so that you can start thinking about it. So suppose a bouncing ball, bouncy ball, is dropped at six feet. Uh, the ball always bounces up to half of its previous height. How far, or, or calculate, calculate the distance traveled by the ball. So let's write down the summation, but uh, one of the key when solving geometric series word problems is to not write the actual value, but write it in a format where you can easily pick up the, the, the pattern. Okay? So the first distance it travels is as it goes down, it's going to go down to, to go down for six feet. And then it's going to bounce up for how many feet? Three. Three. So it's going to bounce up for three feet. But instead of writing three, you want to write it as six times one half. Because that way you can, you can figure out the, the pattern. Okay? Now what's the next action? Six times one four. No, not yet. Down. It has to go down. Well, it goes down. Yeah, yeah. so it's going to go down for six times one half. And then it's going to spring up for six times. One fourth, but don't write one fourth, you write one half squared. That way it's easier to pick up the pattern, right? And then it's going to go down again by six times one half to the second power still, because it went up. So it's like this this much went down, went up, went down, went up, went down, right? And then every time it goes up, the same amount has to be traveled going down, right? And then six times one half to what power? Third. Third. third right? That's how it's going to spring up. And then six times one half to the third power. It's going to go down, and then it just repeats it. Now, notice that this itself is not a geometric series, because if it was a geometric series, it should be like this and this, and then it should be this one, right? So at first, it doesn't look like a geometric series, but then if you look at the series and observe that if you only collect the downward motions, these form a geometric series. And if you collect the upward motions, it also collects, uh, it also becomes a geometric series, right? Now, uh, we're going to discuss uh, no, I don't think we can discuss it here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Later in this class, we will be discussing a, a special case where you're not allowed to rearrange infinite series because it becomes something different. Uh, but at least uh, when you're adding just positive numbers, you can always rearrange infinite sums, and uh, it's the same value. It doesn't matter in which order you add, okay? It's uh, when you have like pluses and minuses, then 
you have to be extra careful when you rearrange things. Okay, so we are just going to rearrange uh, so that you only have the downward motion, 6 plus 6 and times 1 half plus 6 times 1 half squared and plus da 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 plus and then the upward motion starts with 6 times 1 half plus 6 times 1 half squared plus 6 times 1 half to the third da 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 and they're both Geometric series. What's the formula for infinite geometric series? A over one minus r. Yes, that's the one, right? And let's apply to this formula. What is a though? A is six variable. It's the very first number. That's a. What's r? One. It's the common ratio. The the number that you use to get to the next one. Okay. R is the common ratio. A is the very first number. So it must be 6 divided by 1 minus 1 half. That would be the sum of this first one. <coughs> How about this one? What's A for this second one? 6, one half. six times 1 half, or 3. 3 will be the, the very first term. And again, it, the common ratio is 1 half. Now this is 6 divided by 1 half, which is same as 6 times 2. Dividing by 1 half is same as multiplying by 2. So you get 12. This is 3 divided by 1 half, which is 3 times 2, which is 6, and therefore 18 feet is the correct answer. So if it bounces back half of its previous height and it goes forever, it still gives you a finite distance it travels. Okay. So um, it's hard to imagine. You know, I think the ball would be bouncing for eternity, right? It'll always have some kind of motion. Yeah. But still, the total distance traveled is a finite number. Because eventually it stops. Huh? Because eventually it doesn't. It stops. Well, okay. Uh, Are you roll after a while? I guess. It, it, yes. It just move. Yes. Well, no, I was just asking, is it like it's approaching 18? And then it gets closer and closer. But I guess yeah, of course. It, this 18 means that it approaches 18. So it, in, in infinity, it never reaches 18 if you stop at a finite point, right? But it gets closer and closer to 18. But uh, it's kind of not so easy to understand or, or imagine what's happening. But I was thinking maybe what's happening is like, have you heard of the Planck constant? Yeah. And it's like the smallest uh, distance you can have, right? So once once this ball becomes like plain constant, or even before that, uh, physically, it, it, the, everything really s vibrates a little bit, right? So the other kind of vibration will swamp it. But then, even in that case, when it eventually stops, uh, this will be a good estimation of the actual physical distance it traveled. So this is another interesting fact about uh, using infinite series in physics. So a lot of times what happens is like, instead of the infinite series giving you the exact answer for a, a physical question, it gives you a good enough approximation for the everyday phenomena, which usually are not, not infinite. They're usually finite, but the infinity the infinite process actually gives you an approximation that's good enough for a finite process. That's uh, something to think about. <coughs>